Welcome to another edition of Talk Stocks. I'm your host, Keir Reynolds. And today I'm lucky enough to have uh, Alyssa Berry, founder and uh, principal of IR Labs. How are you doing today, Alyssa? I'm great. Uh, nice to be here, Keir. Thanks so much. Super fan of uh, what you're doing and the content that you're putting out. So thanks for the opportunity. Hey, well, the feeling's mutual. I like what you guys are up to as well. So uh, that's why I wanted to have you on so we can... I'm doing a series here on uh, investor relations, and uh, wow, you guys are in the in the forefront there. I'm constantly seeing content, and you guys have had a couple of big wins, so uh, congratulations on that. Maybe before we get too much into that, uh, why don't you uh, give it, uh, my viewers a bit of uh, a background on yourself, how you got sure. started in the investor relations industry? Yeah, you bet. And most people who end up in IR, it, it's always accidental how we end up. No one sets out to really become an investor relations professional. Hopefully we'll see that change over the years. I originally wanted to be a writer uh, in high school. I used to write for the local paper covering the uh, the concert review. I was the concert review writer, uh, loved music, um, and uh, I loved to write and realized that my superpower of writing could be leveraged uh, doing what I do today. Uh, there were a bunch of different steps that got me here. I started out in public relations and fell in love with the capital markets. I also had a dad who he didn't teach me how to change the oil in the car, but he taught me how to trade stocks. And that was a requirement for me as a as a teenager. Uh, and there was a bit of an affinity uh, for for the industry and very grateful to have uh, had one of my first jobs working with the TSX uh, company and being able to see that right through to uh, an exit. They were ultimately acquired by Ontario Teachers Pension Plan. So being able to go through a huge M&A transaction uh, got me excited and hungry for deals. So that's how it all happened. And awesome. And uh, what inspired you to found IR Labs? Uh, like, the, where where did you see the gap in the market, and and how are you filling it? So prior to starting at IR Labs, I was actually a shareholder activist for about five plus years. Um, and those are stories for a whole separate podcast we'll do on activism. Uh, but I really learned a lot as an activist investor in terms of how to find value and how to unlock that value and felt that, well, rather than being the bad guy, I could actually be uh, the good guy and bring this internal to the issuers. I saw a gap in the market for good investor relations. And what I mean by that is really being holistic as an advisor, being able to support on strategy the capital market side, uh, being a great writer, the media, the PR side, everything that needed to come together. And we've been able to put together that platform here at IR Labs. What sectors do you uh, do you primarily work with? We cover all industries. Um, I would say we have an affinity for companies that are better for you, better for the planet, have a sustainability angle. Um, we do have a dedicated mining practice that is uh, based out of Reno, Nevada, uh, which is exciting and, and continues to grow. Um, we like to just work with good companies the same way that you're looking for really great opportunities and doing your underwriting. We'll do that as we look for companies to work with as well, hoping to have very long-term successful relationships. So everybody loves it when we share a little bit of tea, when we drink some tea here. Uh, can you share a few, before we get into the really salacious ones, how about a few memorable IR experiences? Yeah, it's. Uh, I love talking about uh, what we do. And I think as IR professionals, we have the best job in the world. We get access to the C-suite, access to the board, and we get an opportunity to influence uh, companies as well. The biggest wins or, or the successes that we like to celebrate are the ones where uh, ultimately we've connected one of our issuers with capital. Uh, Caroline, my business partner, and I went out a couple years ago when the markets were really challenged and not much was happening. And we set out on a mission to meet as many investors as we possibly could. And we actually found a really great group of small cap investors out of the Niagara region who ultimately invested in one of our companies. Those are really great wins when we can connect our, our clients with, um, with long-term investors. Uh, as, a, as a former activist, uh, I love when we can actually roll up our sleeves and help turn sentiment. Um, so we have a large cap issuer that we've worked with that was going through a bit of turmoil, but being able to rebuild relationships with the analysts and the investment bankers and uh, the institutional investors as well. Those are really great wins when we can actually see 
the sentiment and reputation uh, start to change. So I like to come in when there's a bit of a challenge, things are rocky, and we have an opportunity to turn things for the better. Well, while we're at it, would you mind defining investor relations as you understand it? Yeah, this uh, a lot of people think investor relations is ultimately just drive up share price and, and create liquidity. And that's hopefully what we can contribute to. And that's definitely one of the KPIs. At the end of the day, we I, I see us as we are that bridge between the issuer and the investment community. We get to work with a lot of executives who are phenomenal operators, great founders, but maybe they've never worked in the capital markets before. I love those clients where we can help hold their hand and coach them through. Um, so ultimately, being that strategic advisor and that megaphone to share the story and also guide the executives uh, through that journey. Why is IR considered to be crucial uh, for the success of a public company? Really great question. Uh, I don't know how you could be a publicly traded company without investor relations. A lot of, uh, I think you just have to take a step back and go, why do you become a publicly traded company? Probably because uh, you're looking to access capital that uh, you're, you've exhausted the friends and family rounds, uh, no longer want to be a private company and want to ultimately amplify what you're doing and hopefully grow customers, products, whatever you're selling. Um, if you don't have investor relations, uh, none of that is really possible. It's uh, once you get list on an exchange, you can't expect everybody to just come and find you. Um, the same way if you and I were going to launch a brand tomorrow, we need to drive traffic and visibility for people to ultimately find it and then build that relationship and nurture those, uh, um, those relationships. So investor relations or IR as we call it, it's changed over the years, uh, especially with the rise of digital and social media. What changes have you uh, seen that have uh, had the most impact? It's changed a lot. Believe it or not, my first press release that I was issuing was through a fax machine. Uh, so now that press release is no longer just issued on the wire. It becomes a social post. It becomes a, a media pitch, uh, a, an e-blast gets posted on the website, etc. So it really uh, has come a very long way. I think there's this convergence of technology, but good old fashioned investor relations is still critical. And I think the key word in the industry is that relations, it's still about building relationships and building trust, but finding and leveraging technology to find and access new investors and to create more visibility. So I think it's the two coming together. Um, I have seen budgets change significantly as well. Uh, investor relations used to be that internal IRO, writing press releases, working the phones and, and maybe hosting some quarterly calls. But now it's all about digital, social, um, uh, sometimes investor perks. <laughs> uh, it, it's really changed drastically, especially with the rise of retail. Yeah, um, one of those uh, sort of things that, that you and I have talked about is uh, what's up with the Canadian capital markets? You know, I've asked you and you, you guys have seemed to have built a bit of a bridge to sort of the U.S. I'm seeing uh, more micro caps that have started to list in the U.S. The requirements for listing on the NASDAQ seem to be uh, more achievable uh, than ever before. And, uh, you know, if I look at a, a company that's sort of, you know, look at somebody who's an executive of both a, a CSE listed company as well as a NASDAQ listed company, their NASDAQ company uh, is performing very well. I just looked today and they've already traded over $100 billion worth of stock. Yet their CSE company is struggling to even be able to keep a $25 million market cap and has virtually no liquidity. Same, same uh, type of executive, two very different uh, situations. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Can you comment on that? Yeah, I, I love this question and this topic, and I know you and I have spent a, a little bit of time trying to dissect it. Heading to the U.S. is not the be-all, end-all. It is not the magic solution, uh, that magic pill that will lead to success. Um, I was actually, I had to write it down because uh, I couldn't remember all these numbers this morning, but I took a look and there were 22 transactions uh, in Q1 this year on uh, NICE and NASDAQ for companies sub 500 million market cap. 91% of those IPOs demonstrated a negative uh, rate of return um, uh, 
and then there's 41 percent of those actually had to have reverse splits so heading to the u.s comes with the pros and cons um, and I think it's one of those, if I'm serving on a board and I'm evaluating, is the U.S. the path we want to go down? We want to look at, you know, are we ready? Do we have the capital heading to the U.S.? Is that going to capitalize us for uh, the long term? And do we have some catalysts coming? Sometimes there is some internal look through that needs to happen where there might be a reason why the story is not resonating in Canada. And it might not be. Uh, just because we want to blame the markets and, and blame investors for not writing checks. Uh, I, I think if you've done all that internal reflection of, you know, we've got a great management team, our go to market, our product and service offering is solid, you know, we're capitalized uh, and, and our governance is strong. At that point, maybe look at the US. But if you're not checking all those boxes, I think there's some work to do uh, and, uh, and focusing on Canada is key. What are some other trends or challenges uh, that you're observing uh, in the investor relations sort of, uh, I guess, landscape or industry right now? I think one of the biggest things that we're up against, because these markets are so challenging, budgets are really tight and uh, CEOs often come to us two weeks before they want to go raise money. And I think I always like to remind our executives, go meet people and make friends when you don't need money. And I, I think that's probably the biggest challenge where everyone is, is really excited to grow and push ahead. Unfortunately, the bankers aren't doing as many deals and aren't in a position to help as many issuers. Um, so I think just getting out there and, and building relationships a challenge and finding those pockets of investors who actually invest in small caps or mid cap uh, companies. So that, that probably is one of the biggest challenges. Uh, the other is just uh, navigating uh, the world of digital marketing and its impact. And uh, there's so many different vendors and, and options out there today. Uh, as an agency, we have a ton of really great relationships and partnerships, but just evaluating those and trying to make those recommendations to our issuers and then being able to measure against that for success, that's, uh, that's another, another challenge. What are some uh, common mistakes that companies make with their IR strategy and how can they avoid these? I think getting out there too early before you've really fleshed through the strategy, the messaging, uh, often you get one opportunity to really make a great impression. Uh, and especially if you can get those really um, uh, all-star meetings with those small cap investors. So making sure that you're packaged and ready to go. Um, and a lot of companies are just premature in, I want to get it all done in two weeks and, and put this all to bed. So taking the time to be thoughtful through uh, that strategy. Um, I think that's probably one of the, one of the biggest. Um Excellent. Uh, maybe we could talk about uh, a couple like client case studies, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, a couple that I've watched you uh, sort of uh, do some good work on are both uh, uh, Boyle and DeFi. Maybe I let you sort of unpack those and maybe there's some others you want to talk about. But can you provide a bit of an overview on the work that you've done? Okay, great case study is Beyond Oil, a uh, CSE issuer that we've been working with uh, since they went public a couple years ago, ticker B-O-I-L on the CSE. Uh, they're a really great example of a company that went out and uh, met as many investors as they possibly could meet um, uh, right across Canada. And we've been supporting them uh, on various roadshows and, and virtual introductions. A lot of people have thought the company is really interesting. We put it on radar screens and then they executed. Uh, everyone was waiting for that catalyst. And the moment that that catalyst came, we went out and went back to everybody we've introduced them to over the last couple of years and said, OK, here it is. And uh, so I think this is a good example of building relationships, working the phones and then management ultimately delivering uh, that stock. Uh, I believe uh, we're up like 200 percent since January. Uh, they're just over a buck now. They've had some really great success in their capital raising as well. And this is another one where. Uh, we've been fortunate to put a lot of um, uh, put the company in front of a lot of really great investors who uh, ultimately come in on their financings. Excellent. Now, one that you put on my radar screen last year and has been an absolute amazing performer is one called uh, Defy Technologies. Um, and uh, maybe, so, can you explain a little bit about that company and what you've been doing for them? 
Yeah, uh, DeFi um, trades on the CBOE. They've been a really great success story. Uh, FinTech company uh, focusing on uh, ETPs. They, uh, another example of a company that went out, met as many investors as uh, we could possibly introduce them to, got on a lot of radar screens. Uh, notably, over the last couple of months, uh, they've announced many partnerships. So there were a lot of catalysts in the stock, including uh, the announcement that they are looking at a U.S. listing. Uh, they acquired Anthony Pompliano's research uh, platform, which was another great catalyst for the company as well. And we took them down to the U.S. And what a one example of um, of uh, success working with the investment bank. So we wanted to get the research coverage, which is for a small cap or a nano cap issuer, biggest check mark that you could possibly get. Uh, we were able to support them in getting research coverage from Benchmark. Uh, and they had a couple of other investment banks who are all very hungry and excited to support them uh, from an advisory perspective, but also on their uplisting. Um, so that's created some great competitive tension between the investment banks uh, and those banks have put us in front of a lot of funds as well. Um, so another really great success story. That one is up uh, over 300 percent. It's come uh, back off, uh, given some of the news uh, post uh, the having uh, this uh, this spring. Uh, however, I, I feel really good about where this company is headed and uh, they've got a uh, constant uh, news flow that's been coming out that's uh, helping. Um, helping us in nurturing those relationships. Well, it was a 10X since you put it on my radar screen, so good job there. Uh, when considering uh, new clients, uh, what are some of the key factors that you look for? Yeah, really great question. I think very similar underwriting that you'll probably do as an investor. I'm looking for clean cap tables that don't have funky uh, RSU, DSU, weird option uh, uh, arrangements. Uh, so that, that's one thing for us. I really want to make sure that the story is solid, that the go-to-market makes sense. And um, sometimes we do have to say to companies, you're too early. And uh, it's not that we don't want to support them in their, in their listing uh, if it's a, a pre-public company. Uh, but those are conversations that we're not afraid to have. Uh, we use our guts, uh, uh, that gut check in meeting management and getting to know some of the board members as well. Um, you want to feel really good about the people who are at the helm. Um, and then understanding what their capital allocation strategy is. One of the first questions that I like to ask any prospective client is, what's your exit strategy? And I, I love listening to what the responses are um, because that really helps me understand what their commitment to the company is uh, and the role that we're going to play in that process. Um, so what are some of the qualities in a management team that you that you look for that that will give you some confidence that the company will be successful? Yeah, I think the biggest one is skin in the game. I, I love uh, I love seeing CEOs who are not afraid to to write those checks and participate. Um, so that's pretty key. And that extends to the board as well. I think if you're going to be bringing uh, together advisors, you want to make sure that they are there for the right reasons as well. Um, I like to work with management teams that see the value in investor relations. Uh, as recent as uh, a few days ago, I, I met with a company that says, I effing hate IR. And you know those conversations are really difficult to navigate. They've obviously had a poor experience in the past, uh, but if they don't see value in talking to investors and building relationships, um, I, I, it really, to me, is a red flag of this, uh, this company is going to struggle, uh, especially on the capital raising front, if you have that perspective. Well, that uh, is a good segue. What are some red flags that immediately signal that a potential client is not going to be a good fit? Yeah, I, I think um, big things for us is uh, I going back to that comment about gut check. I, personality fit is is key. Um, I want to put in front of you and others, uh, Cure, uh, it, companies that you feel good about. And I'm not going to get a call saying, Alyssa, why the hell did you put that management team in front of me? They're not ready. Um, so reputation is is of utmost. Um, red flags going back to what I look for as an investor. If there's Weird, funky things on the cap table, um, uh, that is always a red flag. And that's the first thing that I'm going to do when I when I do my due diligence. Um, you and I have talked about RSUs and DSUs. So that's... Can't that's stand the them. <laughs> Can't <laughs> yeah, stand them. Yeah, I mean, them. I think at, at, 
a time uh, at a certain point in time when maybe you've reached that you know half a million dollar you know market cap you know you're you're on to bigger and better things there might be ways to incentivize uh, management teams but having those out of the gates as a as a small cap or nano cap company that's uh, to me a really big red flag um, I also cannot stand uh, the promoter uh, mentality. Um, of course, I love a, a management team that can tell a good story and, and put on that sales hat. Uh, but for those who think uh, that this is going to the moon, best thing since sliced bread, uh, those are usually red flags for me too, that uh, passion uh, might um, uh, overshadow some of the reality. Um, capital markets are not easy to navigate. Um, so those who think that it's going to be an easy ride, um, that's, uh, that's usually, uh, for me, uh, a no go. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, what are some upcoming projects, uh, or goals for IR labs that you're excited about? Yeah, I have really exciting news to share with you. Um, and it's very timely that we're connecting, uh, on this, this week. Uh, we have actually been acquired by a very large, a uh, U.S. Uh, agency called Alliance Advisors, and Alliance is a proxy solicitor. Um, so they sit on some incredible data uh, that we're going to be able to leverage, and uh, they have um, acquired IR Labs for Caroline and I to lead their global IR strategy. Uh, I've always uh, been on a mission to grow IR Labs globally. Uh, I really believe in um, borderless IR, and for our clients' success or for our issuers' success to be able to say. Sure, our UK team will take you on a roadshow, or let's head down to Australia, or let's be in Boston for the day. Uh, we officially have boots on the ground in various markets across North America now, uh, which is really exciting. And uh, so it's a natural next step for us. But uh, this just in, it's, uh, it happened this week, and uh, you've got uh, the news firsthand here, here. Hey, congratulations on that. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's tremendous. Very happy, Thank very you. pleased for you. Uh, how can people find out more about IR Labs and the services that you offer? Uh, visiting our website, irlabs.ca. I'm very active on LinkedIn, love to connect. So anyone who reaches out, I'm happy to chat about IR. So uh, feel free to look me up. Uh, we've got various social handles as well that are all listed on uh, the bottom of our website. Any final thoughts or advice for companies that are looking to enhance their investor relations strategies? I, I just I can't emphasize enough the importance of just having that long view. It's a long game, and uh, those two examples that I gave you as those case studies, it's uh, though those uh, issuers went out with a view of I'm going to build relationships and I'm going to execute, and that leads to success. Hey, well, thank you. Well, I really appreciate your time. Congrats again on the the big news. Uh, look forward to chatting with you a little further. I understand the implications of that. Uh, and uh, yeah, and we wish you a great, uh, a great rest of the day. Thanks, Alyssa. Thanks, Kira. Have a great summer.